Hello my friends, there are some interesting news for today, but firstly, let's go for the military map review. There are some changes, minor changes, but they could be important. And Russia took the previously lost land near to this only district that Ukrainian army still holds. So if you go to the timeline, it was yesterday and it is today. They've took more territory of the military base and they've took those buildings. Again, just for you to check it out and they continue to use the aviation bombs and also they use the special fire shells that could be also the phosphorus shells that burn everything on those quartals but our guys still hold out there. The good news for Ukraine that Wagner lost the part of their flanks. It's just the small part, maybe one field but it is the success of the ukrainian forces it happened near to Vasilkivka over here so it was yesterday and it is today other than that there are no any changes for the military map but i know that there was the update in avdivka maybe this military map is a little bit late with it so Russia sent 400 new mobilized soldiers in the new attempt to get some of the ground near to Avdiivka and those forces were totally demolished by the Ukrainian side. That was confirmed by our guys on the front lines and also by the Russian publics. Why does it happen like that for Russia as usual? Because it's their tactics. They want to use less ammunition and shells and armor vehicles this time and send more people. We call it the meat waves. Or you may call it the human waves doesn't matter again we have the interesting information coming from the bahmut about the wagner army and prigozhin as personality you know from my channel and other media resources that the wagner army should have been drawn from the bahmut city on the 10th of may right after the celebration of the victory in the great patriotic war and yesterday evening prigozhin filmed one more video confirming the intentions to withdraw the army. Previously, he spoke with Kadyrov and Kadyrov said that he will put his Ahmad forces in the Bahmut city. But today something strange happened. Kadyrov said to Prigozhin to stay on the positions in Bahmut. First of all, to provide the guidance for the Ahmad army. But later on, this evening, Kadyrov said that Wagner should stay there and that's it. He said that they should finish their job with the resources they have. Before, Kadyrov supported Prigozhin in many ways and just for one day he changed his mind. It means that there was the talk between Kadyrov and Putin. Also, Prigozhin got some sort of the warning sign from the chief. That is why Prigozhin today said that he will not leave the positions and he also said that they had solved the problem with ammunition again if we go back in the history for around two months there was the huge problem with ammunition for the wagner soldiers and they said already that they solved it but now new problem and they again say that they solved it well what can i say prigozhin played the role of this tough guy but now he shows that he is the puppet. And even Kadyrov can manipulate with Prigozhin. It means that Kadyrov is on a higher rank and on the highest, I think, is Gerasimov and Shoigu. They are more closer to Putin. By the way, I forgot to say about this interesting jacket that Kadyrov wears. Well, it's Louis Vuitton jacket. And the price of it is around $3,800, which is around 8 average Russian salaries. It really shows the attitude towards the average Russian soldiers, who are fighting with equipment from the Second World War. Again, we have the air sirens in many of the areas of Ukraine, and it's been confirmed that Russia fired the cruise missiles and they targeted some areas of Odessa, and just now some of the drones were spotted on the northern part of the Kiev area as well as Chernigiv area. Unfortunately, it's quite a big fire in Odessa right now, and Russia media resources have already said that they've targeted the big Ukrainian ammunition warehouse. But it doesn't really look like that, however everything could be, so I cannot state 100% that Russians were wrong with their statement, but I hope for the best. This map comes from the Russian resource, by the way, the map of the Bakhmut city. Here you can see the Russian assault vectors over here and the Ukrainian counterattack vectors in the Bakhmut city. So still we are trying to reach our positions and get back our territory. And in some areas, Ukraine went on complete defense as they show over here. I don't know whether we can trust this map or not, but it looks similar to the deep state map resource. 
The British Defense Intelligence made several statements about the Russia and its population. Because of the mobilization, Russia lost lots of the workforce and also there is the huge immigration wave. Around 1.3 million Russians have left the country since the beginning of the war. And we also speak about 100,000 IT workers who left the country. Because even for freelancers, it's impossible to stay in Russia. All of the payment platforms like PayPal, Pioneer, they all been cancelled. And by the way, the Visa and MasterCard also. And there are just few banks in Russia that can still make the SWIFT transactions. Also, there were lots of the COVID cases in Russia for two years and with the Russian Sputnik vaccine, they couldn't handle the death toll. It was huge. Plus, we know about the mobilization. Russia officially announced the figure of 300,000 Russian men, but I think there will be more. Because of that, Russia is in lack of the workforce and their economy will just shrink in a few years. Personally, I have no doubts that there will be the crush of the Russian regime and the Russia itself will be formatted and probably into different countries. Czech President Pavel warns Ukraine against the rushed counteroffensive. What he means that we should consolidate our forces and make one strike which will be successful by 100%. So we need to consolidate our resources and not to think to counterattack as soon as possible, to calculate all of the risks and plan this operation with even small details. Because there is just one attempt for the successful mission, our battalions are ready our guys are ready, they should go and win, not just go for the counteroffensive itself. I would agree with the Czech president on that statement. Um, my friends, tell me in the comment section what are they doing, because I'm in the lag of the comments. Probably the only I have is they want to greet the crew of the Moscow ship. The United States asked Turkey to send their S-400 systems to Ukraine, but Turkey refused to do so because they don't really have the analogs of those systems. They don't have the Patriots. Actually, I think it was the main reason for them to purchase the S-400 systems. From what I know, Turkey asked the United States to provide the Patriot systems, but the United States refused to supply those, probably because they have the one more ally in that region, Israel, that was against the supplement of those systems to Turkey. Again, it was the big interview today with Kirill Budanov, and he said that Putin is sick with cancer. It is the first time that some official says about it, even on the Ukrainian side, but he said. But also he says that only time will show who was right. The Ukrainian Defense Minister Reznikov said that there is the huge hype about the future Ukrainian counterattack. I may confirm it. And also he said that people overestimate the outcome of the counterattack. He says that even if Ukraine gets 10 kilometers of the ground, it would be the success. Well, I personally don't think like that, because if you're not counting to cut Russian army in two parts, to cut their supplies, to cause them losses, to cut Crimea from the Russian supplies, it's better not to start this counterattack. Ukraine has prepared nine battalions for the future counterattack. It's a lot, and to have the losses in our men, in our vehicles for 10 kilometers, no, it's nonsense. However, I think I know why he made this statement. He says to our Western allies to give more weaponry, basically, with those words. Because you, my friends, who watch me also from our allied countries, you also have the high expectations for the future counterattack, I'm sure about it. So if Ukraine fails with the counterattack mission, if it will get just 10 kilometers of the ground, you may say to your governments, why would you send the weaponry to Ukraine? So I still wouldn't say that Rezinkov is blackmailing our allies, but they use all of the levers possible to get more weaponry to Ukraine, like the fighter jets or the long-range missiles. Without those weaponry, it would be very hard to Ukraine to return back all of the occupied territories. We also heard the rhetorics from our allies that after this future counteroffensive, there will be negotiations between Ukraine and Russia, and Ukraine will be on the strong position with that. But Ukraine and President Zelensky do not want that scenario, because firstly, Russia should free our territory. There is the low possibility for the Ukrainian future counterattack 
to get back all of the lands including Crimea. But the other side, Russia, with the support of China, with their peace deal, they want to secure their current status quo in Ukraine. They want to freeze this war for five years, let's say. For the five years, Putin will have more resources and they will try to attack Ukraine once again. And I basically support the Ukrainian scenario. We need all of our land to be free from the occupation. Russians intercepted the NATO Air Force L-410, the surveillance airplane that was flying over the Black Sea international waters. Russian Suhois did the abrupt maneuver in front of the plane causing the vague turbulence, so pilots uh, lost control of the airplane but recovered and returned back to the base. Lead 410 is quite a small airplane and it could be vulnerable for those kind of the turbulence. And Polish Air Force decided not to perform the surveillance missions right now. Couple of the photos with Chinese UAV Mugun 5 Pro were published on the Russian resources stating that those were launched by Ukraine and they landed in Crimea. Not sure if it's true, but several drones like that were used to attack the Russian oil depot in Sevastopol. And there was the big fire in Moscow today, the fire was near to the FSB lithium. Ukraine has received the Israeli-made raiders and they will help to prevent and identify the Russian attacks. We are speaking about the missiles and probably also about the artillery shells. The raiders were founded by Lithuanian volunteers from blue and yellow. Well, it's not the advertisement video, but anyways, I may say that my partner, the Atlas VPN, they took part in donating the huge sum of money for those raiders, around 1 million euro. Here we speak about their mother consulting company. All right, I got the information like five minutes ago that Wagner's went on a full-scale attack in attempt to get the control over the district that is controlled by the Ukrainian forces. I think Wagner's now are in a deep problem. For one day, they obviously couldn't have solved the problem with ammunition, and I'm sure that they will not solve this problem so they continue to use the mid wave tactics over there and from the ukrainian chart i may say that we successfully resist against that attack and it was repelled by the ukrainian forces wagner's will try to get control all over the city till 9th of may so unfortunately there will be more and more attacks from their side the Russian Landsat drones continue to attack our forces far behind the front lines and I would say it's the most successful and the most precise weapon that Russia continue to use. So for example this is the M109 artillery system and here it is clearly the Landsat drone that went just into that system causing the fire and luckily three crew members were able to evacuate from that artillery system. I hope that mechanic the drone driver wasn't there at that moment. So unfortunately the shells ignited and we lost the M109 system. And this video published by the Ukrainian side, uh, this is the training, you can see Humvee, it's uh, landed on this vehicle that can float across the river and that is probably how our forces may go on the other shore of the Dnepr river to land abruptly with lots of the forces. So we may create some sort of the starting point for the future counterattack in Kherson area, I think. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and if you want to support my job, there are some links in the video description as usual. You also may support me on Patreon or on the sponsorship of this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your kind support and your help. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.